This is the city, Jump City, California. It's not a bad place to live if you really think about it. It seems to have something for everyone. Sports and athletics, culture, and even education. But like all cities in the world, it's not without crime and foul play. Some crimes are so hot and foul, it requires a team of superheroes to take down the bad guys. And then you have your petty con artists, criminals, and other juvenile delinquents. When they step out of line, I go to work. I wear a license. It was Monday, January 16th. It was cool in Jump City. We were working the day watch out of Juvenile Division. The lady is Tara Strong. My owner is Greg Sipes. My name's Wingman. We had just gotten the call from the Murakami High School. Apparently there was foul play as a superhero was reported assaulted by two students and their accomplice. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Eleven forty-five a.m. I had stayed at the Murakami school to talk with the accomplice Tara Markov. While well, Tara and Greg had gone out to find and arrest her two schoolmates, Amber McKenney and Dion Murray. It turned out Tara was far more involved in this than anyone ever thought. She was caught violating Section Four Hundred Three of the Criminal Code, in which she impersonated a high school student. Her M.O. was crystal clear, to try and live a normal life as a normal girl and forget her past, even if it meant breaking the heart of the superhero who loved her dearly. I gave her her rights. What do you want from me? Let's you and me level with each other here, Blondie. You may have had your reasons for wanting to live a normal life, and while it may be understandable, nothing you could ever say or do would excuse your bad attitude and your horrible behavior. You lived a hard life. You got strung along by people who used and abused you. It added to your stress. That's hardly anyone's problem. You were the one bought in by it. You took one look at the first offer that came your way, thinking this was your ticket out into something better. But like all cases, you didn't take a minute to think, maybe this is too good to be true. Or the possible consequences that could follow it. Then you met your joy boy. It looked like you found someone you could relate to in every possible way. Someone who could give you the love and care you desired. And not only that, but you gave him a ray of hope too. You're not the only one who's lived a hard knock life full of despair. There are others out there who had it far worse than you ever did. They couldn't adapt, they couldn't adjust, they couldn't make it the way you did, and a lot of them ended up killing themselves so they wouldn't have to bear it anymore. So don't go around acting like you're the only person in the world who has needs that need filling, because everyone has that, and some are so desperate to fill them they would do anything for it. That is, if they even had the power, the privilege, or even the permission to do so by the people around them holding them down. You were looking for happiness, and when someone comes along to offer it to you, how did you react? You thought he had betrayed your secret, so you ran out on him. Then you came back, interested in joining the team, and you did it while being a sleeper agent. You strung BB along to give you time to set things up. More drama, more chaos ensued. But you had a choice. You didn't have to go to Slade. You could have worked things out with Beast Boy, because when you align with Slade or any criminal, it only means trouble, and lots of it. Beast Boy thought the world of you. He never gave up on you, and risked his own neck to help you break free and gain your will back. And you realized he was the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Or does the sentence, You were the best friend I ever had mean anything to you anymore? No, of course it doesn't. Because you made another decision. You decided you'd had enough and you didn't want to have powers anymore. You wanted to live a normal life as a normal girl. But then Beast Boy came along and wanted to patch things up with you because he missed you so much that it burned a hole in his heart every day thinking about you and wanting you back. And how did you answer him? You were weak and had needs, and you got them, but look what you did to get them. You told him to stay away from you. You didn't care about him anymore, or all the good times you had. You didn't want to know him, see him, or remember him, and you kicked him to the curb like a sack of garbage and went back to your studies and tried to throw more dirt over your past to bury it. Why didn't you just stick a knife in his back while you were at it? Like I said, you're not the only one with troubles. That kid's been through hell and back again. He knows what it's like to be like you. 
But unlike you, he can't control it so easily. He didn't ask to be the way he is. He didn't do anything to warrant all the punishment and tragedy he suffered. The last thing he needed was the love of his life to kick him out for her own selfish needs. Those days are over, you implied to him. I don't want to remember you or even see you anymore, you meant to say. It didn't have to be this way. You could have given it another chance. You could have gone back to the Titans, patched things up, and finally be a real accepted hero of society. And you and Beast Boy could have been really happy together. Or if you couldn't settle for the hero life, you could have at least still had connections with Beast Boy. You could have still had a relationship and seen each other. But no, it wasn't good enough for you. You had to destroy it all. You had to deny a guy his own happiness, take all of the last of his desperate dying hopes for something nice and wonderful, and smash it to pieces all for yourself and for your own personal gains. He really loved you and needed you. And he was willing to overlook all your mistakes, give you another chance, and give you a home, a good life, love, and happiness, and lots of benefits for the both of you. But you didn't seem to care about any of that, did you? And thought it best to just cut your losses and run away like a scared little coward. Maybe you didn't want to hurt him. Maybe you didn't mean to. But the fact is you did. You hurt him far more than anyone else ever has in his entire life. And all you did was just stand there and point to the exit, demanding he take it and get out of your life. You were in a hurry then to get rid of him. You're in a hurry now to see how fast you can forget about this too. Because you're so self-centered that the world doesn't matter to you. Just as long as you get what you want. No matter who you have to hurt to get it. I want to wish you a lot of luck. I hope it takes the rest of your life. <laughs> Beast Boy, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I never meant for any of this to happen. Then why did you let it? I don't know, okay? I don't know. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. Tara Markov and her two high school friends were certified by juvenile court to be tried as adults. On February 6th, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Jump City. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspects were found guilty on a charge of assaulting a superhero of the law, which is punishable by imprisonment in the state prison from a period of three to five years. The suspect was found guilty for violating Section 403, Criminal Code of the State of California, in that she knowingly impersonated a high school student, which is punishable by imprisonment in the county jail for not more than one year, or in the state prison for not more than ten years. Charges against all other crimes prior to these events are still pending. 